In an unassuming building in Ravenna, on the fifth of seven stories, in the geometric center of apartment 513's 700 square feet of floor space, attached to a carbon frame, is a freestanding wooden door. The door is made of oak wood with pewter hinges. The frame rises from a circular carbon plate bolted to the floor, plugged into the wall via an uninterruptible power supply. Concealed within the carbon plate, an intricate series of interlocking runes and lines encircle the door, even rising up through the interior of the hollow frame. Three monitoring stations on telescoping tripods form a perfect equilateral triangle around the door assembly, each comprised of a spotlight, a diffuser umbrella, and a digital camera recording on a 64-minute buffer. There are no other furnishings in the room, save for a plump leather couch directly facing the central door and a limestone bust of a Bulgarian noblewoman near the actual entrance to the apartment. The room's sole occupant sits on the couch, idly scrolling OK So videos on her phone. Her smartwatch buzzes as the hour approaches. She steps up onto the carbon plate, one hand on the brass doorknob. The seconds to the hour tick down, each one stretching longer than the last. 51, 52, 53, 54. Her hand feels suddenly clammy, though the doorknob is sweating, or maybe she is. Some tingle of electricity shakes the air, some unusual atmosphere making the hair on the back of her neck stand up. 55, 56, 57. She adjusts her grip on the doorknob, flexing her fingers. 58, 59. A single bead of sweat falls from her forehead onto the carbon plate with a soft plink. Four o'clock. She twists the handle and pulls with all her might, nearly knocking herself over off the plate. The door swings open with a gentle creak, revealing absolutely nothing. With an apathetic shrug, she shuts the door steps down from the plate, and flops back onto the couch, catapulting an empty takeout box off the cushions. The cameras keep watching. Red eyes ever blinking. I have no idea what that was. Anyone? Anyone got any ideas? At a loss. We're trying to take our power back any way we can. Gotta be a good night. Gotta be a good night. travelers and welcome back to the court of the jester princes i am your storyteller jonas tinton and we are playing vampire the masquerade v5 midnight gravity joining me tonight our layered lasombra special guest megan martin hello Chaz here with another fun seattle fact seattle was founded on november 13th 1851 by the denny party which means that astrologically seattle is a scorpio sun Cancer Moon, Capricorn Rising. And it has a lot of Denny's. Wow, that's actually... <laughs> a lot of Denny's. <laughs> From what I know about Seattle and astrology, that actually fits really well. I know nothing about astrology. Yeah, that's a cool Checks fact. out, right? That checks out. <laughs> Our Thunderstruck Thin Blood, Casey Reardon. I play Matthias Wilson, and are you thirsting for a Thirsten fact? Every yeah, day of my Casey. damn life. We're entering into a segment that I like to call... Thurston being shitty to the woman in his life. <laughs> oh. It's my oh, favorite no. segment. I've been waiting. Woof. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Oh, you just you burst out of the fucking woods with that one. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if I want facts about this guy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. You're I don't getting think Houdini facts are going to be a lot better. Oh, oh god. Here we go. God. Oh, God. Howard Thurston was never shy in promoting and or exploiting the women of his show, including his several different wives, who we'll get into later in the segment. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh God! Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that's just that's just it. It just exploded. That was the women. Intro. That was the teaser. That was the oh no, that's, that's, that's the teaser. Get, <laughs> next week, next week, we keep going. Oh, next this segment's week. lasting oh, a lot. Yeah, You're really week. having to stretch them out now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we're out no. of facts and just went, let's get more real. Specifically in <laughs> promoting material, he was being he would exploit uh, them. Got so it. Funny. Okay, interesting. Our maladjusted Malkavians, Guy Swanson. Welcome back. Uh, uh, surgeon fish or tangs, such as the blue tang, are a species of tropical and subtropical fish, most residing on coral reefs. These pretty fish have a wicked self-defense in the form of a flat razor-like barb that can be raised up when in need of self-defense. This is where the name surgeon fish comes from. Hmm. Yeah, Reggie. Wowee. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun fact. Our husky Hakata, Andrew Frost. My name is Antonio Strigano. Let's get down to business. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's get Take down to care business, of business to stake those vampires. And our ternary Toriador, Rachel Cordell. I'm Mars, and tonight's song is Gimme, Gimme, Gimme a Man After Midnight by ABBA. Great song. Ow, ow, ow. Mm-hmm. I'll, uh, I'll give a bonus willpower if anyone can tell me what ternary means. Ternary? Yeah. Is it relevant Turnery. to something? I want to guess that it means resourceful. It's someone who Music has term? affairs with Arctic turns. No, it's like someone yep. who uses like like things that you like yep. turn, like either like a spinner's wheel or like a lathe, right? It's to do a turn up. As someone that fucks who's birds. good at turning it's... the tables. Wow, I love these answers, but no, extremely far from the truth. I honestly thought someone would just guess it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I missed the original term. I just heard Casey's line about it having sex with birds. So uh, the word is turnery, Sky. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Last time it. on Midnight Gravity. <laughs> Confirmation in three, two, one. <laughs> Last time on Midnight Gravity, we entered a period of downtime before our coterie are due to ambush Ajax Volantis at the nightclub, Delirium. Antonio sent a letter to his brother Marco and cleaned up his old apartment. Mars revisited her past and made up with her number one fan, Ares. And Reggie got that visit to their mom that Olga had promised, which didn't go poorly at all. But we have not yet heard from our alchemist or our sleuth. So let us turn to Matthias Wilson and ask, what are you doing during this brisk final week of March. So Matthias is kind of going back to things that he thinks will comfort him that have in the past where he is kind of studying the blue blood, trying to figure out, crack the code on that. But as we kind of look at him over his alchemy table, going back and forth between the microscope, the beakers, trying different reagents to replicate this. You can see that his hand is just kind of twitching and he's just kind of shaking his head. He like rushes over to the library, picking up different uh, occult books, trying to maybe find something a little bit more on the Oculus or maybe even finding a little bit more on the King of Shadows that Chaz had mentioned, Mm. trying to learn more about that as well. But again, he's just kind of, we're just looking at him and he's looking at the pages, but he's not really consuming the information until like he finally closes the book, sets it down. And he, his, his alchemical lab and his library are both set up in different dressing rooms of the prop theater. And we see him leave the dressing room and head upstairs and he steps out onto the stage, just thinking about what Mars had said to him. Mm -hmm why don't you perform anymore? And he's looking out at the empty seats and he has a silver dollar that he's kind of rolling along his knuckles before he puts that away and pulls out a deck of cards. (laughs) And he says, Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to witness will mystify and entrance. It will awe and amaze. Some call it mysticism, magic, And it is, for what can be more magical than a captivated audience? Prepare for wonder. Prepare for miracles. Prepare for the marvelous Matthias Wilson. And he flicks his wrist and all of the cards just shoot out of the deck and just like hover above him, almost freeze frame as they fall down and almost are just guided right back into his hand. And he looks out, just holding that pose for a moment when his phone rings. 
Oh. Yeah. Uh, you. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my heart. You're just staring out of this empty theater and uh, I think maybe disturb some of the birds roosting up ahead with your, uh, your spiel. There's flapping of wings and cooing of pigeons. And in the deafening, echoing silence, your phone buzzes and uh, you see that it is Cassandra Brahm calling you. I kind of sigh and put the deck of cards away as I answer the phone. Yeah. Okay. Um, I took another round on everyone. I tried to talk to them. I went to Teddy specifically, and he completely stonewalled me. I know, I know you guys aren't exactly on great speaking terms, but it would mean a lot to me if you could try and talk to him. We really need to crack this. Soon. Yeah, I guess we do. Okay. Uh, is he at his place? Usually. All right. I'll head over now. You're a godsend, Matthias. Thank you. Yeah, you owe me. Ooh. She uh, she kind of pauses for a second hmm. and then hangs up. I think Matthias like looks out again to the empty stage and just kind of sighs for a minute before turning away from the only thing that actually has ever calmed him. Go out in your new uh, your new your new old car. <laughs> <laughs> yep. New to you. Drive uh, drive out south. Uh, away from downtown into Soto, where uh, Teddy Bellwether runs the Weather Vane, his kindred-friendly nightclub. It's uh, it's just at the corner of a street. You see, you know, some gaudy neon lighting in the windows. There's a uh, there's no word like the word Weather Vane is not on the storefront, but there is a neon sign of a rooster uh, rotating above the uh, the corner of the place. You hear faint music coming from inside. I think Matthias is kind of idling in the car for a second, just kind of shaking his head, and he's like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure I can get through to him this time. Right? Right, yeah, okay. And he turns the car off and heads inside. It's a pretty relaxed atmosphere. There's sort of an open space full of like couches and a uh, big circular plush couch in the center, tables and things on the outsides, uh, a bar in the far corner, doors that lead into a, an area with a larger open dance floor with a stage for live performances. And uh, you know, of course, where the offices are between the hallways and snaking around to the back where the brick wall takes precedent. Yeah, do you just uh, try and slip past security? You're going to try and get an official meeting of some kind? Do you going to look for him on the floor? I think I'm... I'm not going to try and slip past security necessarily, but I'm not going to try and make an appointment either. I'm going to try and catch him on the floor if he's out and about. And if not, I will wait until he is. Okay, great. Then uh, if you're going to wait, then I will say just make... Uh, roll, roll wits awareness. Sure. Let's see how long this takes. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's a one. That's oh, one. Oh no. That's fine. This is not a question of success, but just time. You're sitting there, perhaps drinking and keeping it down for now, or just faking it entirely. I'm holding a nice, refreshing Coca Cola for uh, <laughs> comfort more than anything. Yeah. With the label out towards the end. <laughs> <The label laughs> <out. laughs> uh, man, that soda cost you twenty five dollars. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> Inflation. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, the the scene here is pretty pretty mixed in terms of like age and demographic. There's some uh, younger folks around their early twenties, and some older, like upwards of 40, 50, 60, who are just like hanging out at the bar or uh, or in or one of the tables. Among the crowd, uh, with your one success, you don't spot any kindred. You know that this place does cater to feeding needs in certain cases, and you don't see anyone you recognize here. All mortals tonight, all kind. I'm a little bit preoccupied anyway. Yeah. And as Teddy continues to not appear, you are just starting to sink into a pit of paranoia and embarrassment and dread. And you're just like, like the worst thing here is like, you're here all night. He doesn't even come. You have to show up another night and just how, how yeah. obnoxious that would be. But after about 90 minutes or so of this, um, you do eventually see Teddy emerge and just start circling uh, the dance floor and the, the seating spaces as 
managers of clubs like these sometimes do to just get a feel for the vibe, how's the turnout. And uh, yeah, you see this uh, smartly dressed mid-twenties man of Thai heritage. He's got a short little faux hawk and a scruffy beard in a very smart suit and tie. Do you approach him? Do you wait for him to notice you? I think as soon as Matthias sees him with the blush just not needing to really be activated, his heart yep. just kind of like tightens and he gets a little bit nervous. And I think I'm going to take as much time as I can get and wait for him to notice me. So eventually, Teddy strolls around the room twice before finally turning and, and spotting you. You're pretty sure he saw you yeah, and just chose not to come by. But once he's made his rounds, he circles back and leans over your seat. He's like, well, look what the cat dragged in. Yeah, hi. Hi, Teddy. Um, Business, pleasure, shall I sit? Shall we retreat to my office? It's, it's business, and the office is probably a good idea. Great. He throws an arm around your shoulder and, like, pulls you out of your seat and uh, guides you back to his offices. He's waving at people he recognizes as he goes by. People are going, hey, Teddy. Hey, Teddy. Nice to see you, Teddy. Looking good, Teddy. And uh, he doesn't have a tight grip on you, but, you know, he's very much communicating that he is in control of this situation. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you get away from the people, his kind of smile fades a little bit, and he looks not angry, but just, like, a little bothered. Leads you back into a pretty neatly kept office, paper scattered over the desk, another glowing rooster sign on the wall behind it. Starts pouring himself a drink, offers you a glass. Uh, I turn it down. Sniffs it, takes a sip. You got some nerve. Me. You come to my club and say you're here on business? I am here. Catch up first, not even a coffee? I mean, gosh. <sighs> Look, Teddy, I I don't know what else to say. Great. Start with what you came here for then. Let me make this quick. I think you have some inkling and as to why I might be here. Mm, I'd like to hear it from you though. The blue blood? Mm. Sugar. Yeah. What about it? I have a feeling that you know a bit more about this than I do, and I was hoping that you could enlighten me. Cass sent you, huh? She had a hand in it, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think you would uh, have the balls to come to me on your own. Look, Matthias, you both speak at the same time, and he kind of raises an eyebrow, and he raises the glass to you, uh, offering, you know, letting you speak, and then sits down in his chair. I don't... I don't know what more you want, Teddy. I... I understand a little bit more where you're coming from, but there are better ways to get what you want. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, actually. That's why we're here. That's why... You've come to me because we are going to get what we want. And you think this is going to do that? <laughs> Matthias, you're good, you know, you're good at the alchemy. You're good at surviving. You're a good person. Good doesn't cut it. You have to want something. You have to strive for something. You have to be willing to risk your life and the lives of the people you care about if you want to get out of the hole you're in. I wanted you on board. It was the others who said you were too much of a stick in the mud, the bother including. So, I can tell you about the sugar, but only if you make a commitment right here right now you're gonna pick a side you're gonna pick the right one teddy there there's so much that will can and will go wrong here you're not looking at all of the different outcomes this is a question of trust matthias i can't trust you with this information you don't trust that you'll be okay so we keep going i was another 30 years 
Ooh, I did miss talking to you. But once a decade is probably good enough for me. Have you tasted it? No. You've got something in you that the rest of us don't. Your blood is a little thicker and redder than the rest. Which means you're part of the problem. I wouldn't risk it if I were you. But for those of us caught in between living, dead, the thin blood, it's something special. Teddy, what the hell do you think I've been doing this whole time? Do you think I've been the lapdog of the Camarilla for my own enjoyment? Or do you think that I've been there trying to up our reputation in some semblance of way so that maybe, just maybe, things will get better for us? I've been here a long time. I've been doing a lot of favors. And there's going to be a point where I get to cash those in. I'm not going to just cash them in for myself. I've seen too many others suffer for it. Yeah. How many of them have died under your watch? Don't. There will be more. And do you think that this sugar is going to be our ticket to freedom? You don't think it's going to be a great way to throw us all back in the mines making it for them? No. Because they can't use it. What? Neither can you. What are you talking about? Give it a try. Just make sure you're in a safe space. I'll ask you one more time, Matthias. Will you come down here, live with us in the dirt, or will you stay up in the tower when it starts falling down? You don't have to give me your answer right now. But I can't tell you anything more until you do. I think with that, Matthias grabs his coat and goes to the door, and as he gets to the door frame, he stops and turns and just says, you know, there was a time once that you didn't have to be so cruel. And I like that about you. Don't forget who you were when you scrounged to topple the tower. And then he just turns to go. I think Teddy lets you leave without saying anything. I think you get all the way down the hallway waiting for one last barb, but he just lets that conversation weigh on you. And if you do glance back, you just see him with this pensive expression on his face, like he is calculating what you have said as much as you're calculating what he has. I think Matthias is just going to then get in his car and maybe drive a block away before screaming at the top of his lungs (laughs) in his car. And once he gets that out, he is going to text Chaz Mm. and ask her when he can see the book. Chaz. Yes. You happen to be a member of a particular vampiric clan that has some difficulty with technology. So while you do own a phone. (laughs) You asking me if I can receive texts or <laughs> well it's um it's a difficulty for technology test to, <laughs> to make a phone call just to make a phone call you've been better off with a carrier pigeon because microphones can't transmit the voice just like cameras can't pick up their image oh wow oh, someone someone call a reggie and get a bird that doesn't mean necessarily <laughs> that you're you that can't you know. use a phone at all but i would like to roll for the fun of it mm-hmm. so why don't we call this a wits technology test, which for you is just a wits test, <laughs> and just get one success. Oh, boy. Fingers crossed. That's one success. One, one success. success. There you go. <laughs> and we creak on by. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we can uh, fast forward then through the resulting conversation. It is probably... 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. It is March 31st um, (laughs) when you are due to uh, ambush Ajax. So we'll say that this happens on, let's say, the 29th. You probably wake for the night, Matthias, and Chaz is either in the hallway or in the lobby or in your apartment. I mean, wherever Chaz would like to be. But 
hiding in the shadows. Sitting next to the bed watching him sleep. <laughs> oh, really? No, I Michael. won't do that. <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> but I am waiting at the door. Yes, Chastity, you have been sent by Olga to collect Matthias and bring him to the Tremere Chantry, where he will be permitted limited access to the alchemical grimoire. You guys motor on over. The Chantry is up in Ravenna in the University District. Is there any conversation that happens in the car? Um, oh. Probably not. <laughs> I was going to say, sounds like no. It's just a very quiet, calm car ride. I imagine Matthias is just leaning against the window, just tapping his fingers on the side of his head. And Chaz is, uh, or actually, no, Chaz has a motorcycle, so probably it's Matthias's car that we're driving. I was going to say, I don't know that we even took the same car. I probably went separately. I can follow her, yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. I can sit in the car and um, give you directions. Just ping where you, just ping the address, Chaz. Just I ping it. I can't ping anything. I'm... I can't use Google Maps. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's, you, you, what is you the see, ping? Chaz, like opens up Google Maps and it's just like, turn left into Elliott Bay. <laughs> 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 so yeah, okay, yeah. So you'll, yeah, you're on the motorcycle, you're in your car, you follow her up to Ravenna. Uh, the Chantry is, uh, from the outside, it just appears to be one of many, you know, buildings in a, a strip of them on the street. Uh, as you go inside, there are these two, there's like a small fenced off wrought iron space, you know, connecting the building to the sidewalk. There are two gargoyles perched on the fence posts that just loom ominously over you as you approach. There is an intercom. Uh, you uh, walk up in front of it to the little camera and you hear a voice say, Who are you? What do you want? Hi, Chaz here with a bit of a guest uh, here on a little field trip. Um, I think he can tell you more details. From a quick cutaway to the interior, we see uh, the silhouette looming over the security cams. Just seeing a glitchy, blurry spot on the security camera, and just he they, they ask that question here through the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they turn off screen to, to someone standing behind them and go, It's the La Sombra. Let her in. And <laughs> buzz you in. Uh, you enter the interior is not bigger on the inside, but it is fancier than it seems to be. There's some kind of illusion on the windows of the building that disguise what is truly being kept within. You see, it looks like kind of a modern laboratory, like a hospital laboratory mixed with a Victorian library is the vibe with long, stark hallways and uh, floors, very clean, but eccentric bookshelves and uh, decorations on the walls. You are greeted by none other than Arvoidus. Oh. The older uh, man with the grizzled white white hair and the, the scruffy, you know, loose stubble, scar over his left eye. Uh, Christine, if you wouldn't mind hopping in. Nope, not really. Oh, <laughs> you son of a bitch. I did that just for Sky's for reaction. A brief you Sky second. would do her face. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm going to send him a link to the call now and get him in here. He's wearing just like a uh, <laughs> a black turtleneck and pants, and he's got his hands crossed behind his back, and he says, Wilson, Dalian, follow me. All right. Absolutely. Matthias, how you doing, Tiger? I'm fine. Why? Just making sure that you're um ready and prepared, know what you're here for, know what you want. I have no idea what could even be in that book. There's no way to be ready for it than to be ready for everything. Well, I'm glad you sound confident. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with confident. Uh, Arvoidus leads you through these twisting hallways into a sort of open, what looks kind of like an operating theater. There's uh, raised seating on the walls uh, or on the sides of the room. No one is in them, but they seem to be available. Uh, the room is pretty stark white all the way around. None of those gothic decorations. And in the center of the room is just a stone pedestal with the, the thick grimoire on it, on a slightly angled stand to make it easier to read. And uh, seems to be a prepared, you, you assume, prepared for your presentation, not that this is how they always do it. Right. Arvoidus gestures for you to go inside, and he follows you and uh, turns and stops Chaz and says, you can wait here. I give him a really tight smile and I say, oh, oh, of course, I'll just uh, I'll wait and I'll uh, help guard the door. <laughs> Slams the door. <laughs> <laughs> so with, the, with this door situation, though, do I get to do some fun shadowy things? Can I can I still get inside the room? You want to go inside the book room? Mm-hmm. 
Sure. I'm wondering if maybe I can throw my shadow into the room or try to. Yeah, uh, you can you can definitely put your shadow perspective into Matthias's shadow before the door shuts. You will <laughs> your your senses come from the shadow and the book is is on a raised pedestal. So I don't know that you'll see much, but you can do it. I can watch Matthias. You can watch Matthias, yeah. You can watch his reactions for sure. <laughs> you know what? I'll uh I'm gonna just keep an eye on Matthias. So I will absolutely do that. Yeah, Matthias is definitely emotionally stable. Um, shadow <laughs> perspective then requires a rouse check. Not great. Getting hungry. All right, we're hungry three. Yeah, you should get a snack before we take on Ajax. You hear Kitty's voice in your ear. Chas, why are you spying on him? There's so many goodies around to explore. Don't you want to take a look? There could be all kinds of things hidden within the Chantry. They won't mind if you just peek around. I think that Chaz starts to kind of shake a little bit. Um, she's really trying to hold her composure, especially in a place like this, but um, she starts to lose control a little bit and hearing the sound of Kitty's voice too always really strikes a nerve. So I think that she actually kind of lashes out with a kick at the door and uh, she's going to retract the shadow. Okay. And she's now actually just registering even her anger, like getting shut out of the room in the first place is kind of registering even more. And it's a little bit mm -hmm. harder for her to get a handle on it. She kind of resolves herself that if she couldn't get into that room, she's just going to find out which room she can get into. <laughs> I will say you don't have to retract your perspective. The uh, wording of shadow perspective Can I do both? is actually, I, I, I thought it was more like a D and D familiar thing where you kind of work out but actually you can see your own surroundings and through the shadow perspective. It's kind of your, like you're looking through uh, a mesh that sort of separates your perspective from the shadow perspective. And you can see both at the same time. Yeah. You have picture in picture in the corner of your vision. Well, that's even better. <laughs> so yeah, you can, you can keep it up if you want. Oh my want. gosh, split screen. Yeah. Um, and you can certainly snoop around. All right. Well, I will absolutely continue to spy on Matthias then. Great. And also see what else I can find. <laughs> Delightful. Uh, why don't you go ahead? Uh, you can also activate Shadow Cloak, which is free. So why don't you go ahead and roll Dexterity Stealth plus two dice to sneak around. And I will come back to hear that result after we look at what's in this book. You got it. Matthias. You see Arvoidus circles around you. He wills some Vitae out from underneath his fingernails and sort of draws it up, floating in the air, and uses it, kind of crafting like Doctor Strange sigils in the air, casting blood sorcery around the room to presumably ward it against any unwanted intrusion that you might have brought with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then he just takes a step back and puts his arms behind the back again and says, you have one hour. Matthias just kind of nods. Uh, he takes off his gloves and puts on a separate pair of like softer gloves specifically yeah. for like touching older artifacts and things like that. You see our void is utterly impassive, but he tilts his head two degrees at that in approval. I don't know. This thing's old. Yeah. And he is going to start looking through it. And then in addition, if our doesn't stop him, he's going to try and take some notes on it as well. Uh, you will not be stopped from taking notes. That's totally fine. Great. Why don't you roll intelligence plus alchemy? plus two dice for your loquacious Olympian. And there's some base information you'll get, but uh, we'll see how much more you, you're able to glean. Alchemy, intelligence. Come on, get that crit, buddy. We're all praying. We're all praying. Get that fizzy lifting drinks recipe. Ooh. I'm gonna... I, I, to I am gonna willpower. Yeah. yeah. You might as well. And I also am gonna... Eh, should I bludge surge? Is that worth it? I only get one die. You only get one surge. die, you yeah. little thin blood... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to blood surge too. Why not? Hell yeah. Uh, which is a rouse check, correct? Rouse check for one die. All right. Well, hunger too. Right, hungry. Matthias, don't fuck this up. Just under my breath. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Hey. Right, there it is. One Get one more. more die if you want it. I'm taking it. I'm not going to say no. Classic. Uh, so that <laughs> should be a crit. Yeah, that it's is a beast. Indeed. It's a it, the messy critical. So that's a total of eight successes. Ooh, whoa, hasty on eight successes, which, as we've discussed, is above the maximum difficulty on the rating scale. 
in V5. Oh, I needed that. First of all, let me ask. Mm -hmm. With everything Matthias has been going through recently, everything he wants to accomplish, everything he's learned about the sugar, if he could find anything in this book, what would he want? What magic key, what page could he turn to that would make him whoop and holler for joy? Oh, man. You want to think about it for a minute? I can cut to Chaz. Yeah, I'll think about it for a minute. Sure. Uh, while we consider Matthias's deepest desires, let's uh, let's see what Chaz <laughs> got up to. Chaz, I see five successes on your stealth roll, which is pretty good. So you're creeping around. As you're descending deeper into the Chantry, you're starting to get that maybe it is bigger on the inside after all, just in a very subtle way that sort of messes with your sense of direction to prevent you from realizing it until you've gone mm. very deep. There aren't that many people around. Um, in fact, in all your snooping, you only pass by one other person, a ghoul of some sort, a mortal who has been blood bonded to one of the Tremere here that is just walking by with some papers and not even paying attention to you as you kind of fade into the background. It is pretty well lit in this building as well. Uh, so it is hard as a Lissandra to make use of your shadow cloak, but on five successes, um, you are expertly darting behind statues and pillars and, you know, hiding the old fashioned way. Perfect. You are kind of subtly testing doors and locks and like scanning bookshelves and nothing is catching your eye exactly. Are you just looking for the first interesting thing or is there something in particular you are hoping to see? I think I'm looking for just the first most interesting thing. And I'm I'm curious if I'm getting any kind of sense that maybe some of these doors that I'm testing that I can't easily open might have something of interest behind them. You, I think your guess as a as an older kindred and knowing Tremere in general is like probably it's a lot of like storage rooms for their various artifacts and projects and things perhaps rituals being conducted or, or that had been conducted, that sort of thing. So it could be interesting things, but like nothing that would jump out as like, whoa, this is the craziest. So if we're just looking for the first interesting thing we spot, uh, let me roll a die. Oh. 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 Hmm? oh. What could that be? Hmm? Okay, let's <laughs> listen. Hmm. Let's be, let's be fun. Huh? You get around to an open, you see your first open door you see, and it appears, it's, it's uh, that ghoul that was just walking by. They exit, shuffling some papers and uh, leave it open as they walk away. And as you take a peek inside, you see what appears to be like a recreation of an apartment room. It's like a hardwood floor, almost completely empty except for there is a plush couch on one side, a bust of a Bulgarian noblewoman by the door, and in the center of the room is this weird, like, there's a freestanding door on a carbon plate with cameras and laptops set up in a circle around it. Oh my god, it's Monsters, Inc. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am definitely gonna go into the room and close the door behind me. Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming that it probably shouldn't have been left open. Mm, probably not. Chaz got lucky tonight. Uh, yeah, you go inside and you see you see this thing. You instantly are consumed by this sense of like, you're like your sleuth senses are tingling, right? And as you enter and start to kind of peek around, you see the door in the frame. Uh, the handle turns and it opens of its own accord. Oh, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide, 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 hide. I'm gonna hide. We're gonna cut back to Matthias. Uh, Matthias. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, oh. I'm interested in both things, but oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias, uh, what uh, what uh, what does Matthias most want to find in these pages? There are two things that are at the forefront of Matthias's mind in terms of what he could find in this book. The first is just sugar. That has been kind of a search that Matthias has been on for a while at this point, a couple months. But the other thing that's on his mind is based off of what Teddy said. And he wants to see if there's any alchemical way to either thicken or thin the blood. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what a response. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that. I gotta look something up. The answer can be no. I think the answer is yes. 
Ooh. I think there's specifically a thing for it. There is a, I believe, blood sorcery thing that allows you to uh, increase your blood potency, but it's not, I don't that's, think there's a thin blood alchemy thing that allows that's that. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Thank you. I, I was yeah. like, I know that there is Oh, I know. I looked it. it up. Don't worry. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I looked this up a while ago when I was researching blood alchemy. Yeah, you got it. Okay. So there is nothing about sugar specifically. Um, like you don't see anything that specifically matches your, the, the, the work you've done reverse engineering it. And that makes sense because there is no reason for this grimoire to be connected to sure. local drug affairs in Seattle. There are related things that you can, you as a person can sort of mentally bridge and be like, oh, I could use this to sort of make this work. And on eight successes, what you understand from that kind of helps click through what you didn't, what you were missing from your analysis of the, the substance itself. There is human blood and it has a special resonance. And from what you're reading, there's like a, a section that is just a list of like mortals with unusual blood resonances that have cropped up over the years. Some of them are noted to have been embraced and become notable members of various vampiric clans, especially those with unique bloodlines. Among those mentioned are the Kiasids, the Lianan, and the Daughters of Cacophony in this list. And there's also many others that just say, that are just like, we did experiments on them and they died. <laughs> we couldn't oh, figure good. it out. Yep. Like that's the majority of the list. Uh, there's also others that say like, they didn't get embraced, but Kindred found them very hard to resist feeding on mm. or found them uh, very, just found them disgusting to feed on. These sort of weird, unique qualities of the blood that have been searched for, even bred for over time, but seem to pop up somewhat randomly. And you, you know, you're not sure like what the specifics are, but you're like, ah, something like this. There is someone like this in Seattle and their blood is being used to make sugar. Oh, okay. You also sort of put together as well that there are substances that can drive the beast to frenzy. And that seems to line up with not only what you've discovered on your own, but also what Teddy said, that there is some quality separating full-blooded vampires from thin bloods and that's why it affects them differently mm, that's what he meant because i frenzy like a normal chump you sure do mm. there is also um this is an alchemical grimoire and only about a third of it is devoted to uh, experiments with the blood over the years thin blood alchemy is a much newer process a much newer discovery but right. you know alchemical blood experiments have been a thing for a long time it seems tr the tremere were involved in the creation of this book long ago. The rest of the book is like literal alchemy. Like there's stuff about transmuting lead into gold and other nonsense things that surely are not actually possible. Wait, 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 one more hour, one more hour. <laughs> <laughs> and because you got eight successes, your next purchase of a thin blood alchemy formula will be discounted by two experience per level. Ooh. Ooh. Hell yeah. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, things that you might find in the book, you may ask. Uh, otherwise, we shall cut back over to Chaz. Can I ask a question if he doesn't have one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just wondering because I have been watching you this whole time, sort of. So I would just love to know what Matthias' face looks like while he's reading all this. Oh, yes. You're seeing this through your shadow perspective. Over the course of time, as Matthias is flipping through, like when he's first doing the looking into sugar, like you can see him just kind of like nodding, being like, oh, yeah, of course, that's another alternative to doing this, whatever, but things like that. And then when he starts connecting like the last bit of specific blood resonance, he is like eyes wide, like very interested in that. Um, for several reasons that I won't necessarily go into because Chaz wouldn't know, but like this is the thing that like towards the end of this whole search is when like he is really getting intense with everything. Okay, cool. Uh, let me also add Matthias on eight successes. Um, assuming Ajax is involved somehow with the production or distribution of sugar, your best guess for why he wanted this book was to find a way to make it so that it wouldn't affect full-blooded kindred that way. Right, okay. Because he probably is not smart enough to do anything else with it. Yep. Chaz, this door opens. You look to hide, but there is literally nothing and nowhere in this room to hide behind. So you just kind of prop yourself up behind the noblewoman statue and try to look small. 
Mm-hmm. Door opens. And it closes. Nobody comes through? Nothing? I don't see anything? Just an empty door. Oh, I go up to the door. Can I, um... So it's like in, it's in the middle of the room? Yes, it's on a, so there's a black carbon plate on the ground that's connected to a UPS that's connected to the wall. There are these camera setups around it, like someone's filming an OK stuff. <laughs> and, you know, with the, they have like the, the umbrella diffusers and everything. And the door itself is just mounted in this carbon frame, the oak door. Um, so I'm going to stand on the plate and I'm going to try the doorknob and see if it opens. OK, you're going to do an OK so dance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. OK, you open the door. Oh, it just opens? Yeah, just opens. Oh, okay. And on the other side is a young man with bronze skin and shaggy dark hair wearing a green Ooh. hoodie and jeans. Oh. Ooh. 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 Hmm. He's hot. Do I recognize this man? I love him. Absolutely not. Although the audience of our hypothetical TV show may recognize his gleaming white smile. Mm. Oh. And he kind of looks surprised almost that you are there. Like he's as surprised to see you as you are as to see him. And he goes, oh, hello. Chaz, right? There it is. Oh, um, yes, you know, I'm so sorry. This is so rude. I must have forgotten your name. Have we met? Hmm. No, but I've been keeping an eye on things for a little while. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's interesting. I uh, usually like to think of myself as someone who keeps an eye on things. So what have you um been seeing, friend? We don't have a lot of time. The Tremere here are quite perceptive as well. Mm -hmm. And they'll notice something's going on in here. So you should get back to Matthias quickly. But remember this, the door doesn't care where it opens. You understand me? I do. I don't think I caught your name. <laughs> and he reaches out and pulls the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a stinker. What a little stinker. You, you peek around the side and he is not there. Hmm. Okay, I think I think I think that Chaz will try to open the door again just to see if she can. It opens, but there is no one there. She closes it and opens it again. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to roll for it. <laughs> <laughs> do this. I'll do this in front of everyone. It's a one. <laughs> oh, exactly oh my one. God. Nope, it's empty. <laughs> no one's there. She gives a heavy sigh and closes the door back but I think she's feeling at least curious, if not content. Mm -hmm. I, she'll take one more quick scan of the room just to make sure if there's nothing else in here of interest. No. I mean, I assume you don't have much interest in the laptops being a Lissandra. Nope, I sure don't. Um, How many cameras did you say were in this room? Three. They're all pointing at the door. They're pointing at the door. Would they have seen me? Yeah. Well, they would have seen a blurry, glitchy block. Which I think they know would be me. They would know 100% would be you, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that I will break the cameras and oh, then Jesus. I will see myself out. Alright. Uh, uh, with that, Chaz, you can They have digital recordings. Casually make your way back to Chaz doesn't know that she's Lissandra. I know. I, I'm a Lissandra, I don't know that. Casually make your way back to the book room. Um, where Matthias is wrapping up, unless you have any other questions, Matthias? No, I don't think so. Or you will both be escorted out. Once we get outside, I just like turn to Matthias and I say, you know, I'm actually feeling awful tired. I was wondering if I could hitch a ride with you instead of taking the bike back. Uh, you're parked in a towaway zone. <laughs> I feel like you don't mind to help a girl out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Can we get in the car and start driving? Where am I dropping you off? Um, you can just go to your place and then I'll walk from there. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah. So I was just wondering, after our our little mission that we got to do together, how did it go? It was a little bit enlightening. Good to hear. You see, I'm just uh, collecting some reviews for Olga. 
on how her favors go. So <laughs> enlightening is good. On one out of five stars, do you give it a good five? You can put Ooh, that down. Damn five. Great. So just some follow up questions. Um, what in particular did you happen to find enlightening in the book? And this one's anonymous. It doesn't have to go back to Olga. Yeah. How does Matthias feel about you saying that? <laughs> How, how legitimate does that sound? Mm, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Matthias, you can roll an insight if you want real quick. Yeah, I'd love to or, roll Or you can just assume it's not legitimate. <laughs> I mean, I'll roll it regardless. Uh, insight wits? Intelligence. Yeah, wits or intelligence, sure. I'll do intelligence if I can. Uh, that's a six. Messy critical. Okay. You, in this moment, uh, I think again, I think that this messy critical, like you're, you're running a high, right? You're just like... Yeah. It's it's an exciting time and your beast is frothing for more success, for more up instead of so much down. And you just have this moment of clarity where you just pierce the shadows that surround this La Sombra and you're like, no, 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 she's she's really interested. She's not going to tell. Okay. Okay. Matthias says, this isn't the first time something like sugar has been made. And the piece that's been missing is... Something that's rare that I have not seen, heard of, or smelled before. And I am incredibly curious to see what it tastes like. Interesting. So here's the deal. We're both friends here, right? You don't have to answer that just yet, but... His <laughs> smile kind of creeps down a little bit as you say that. <laughs> so, as a friend, I think that it's wonderful that you learned that tonight and as a friend I'm happy to keep this between us and as a friend I would suggest that you keep that as much under the cuff as you can as well but I would love to hear what else you find out about this sugar sugar I'll see if I can keep you posted on what else we find Good to know. And also, just remember, just like tonight, you can get into a lot more places if you have a babysitter. So, <laughs> if you ever need any more escorting, let me know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if anything comes up for that. What did you poke around in? Oh, you know, just um, in and out of a few doorways. Nothing too crazy. Come on, Chaz. I know you're the curious type. You know what? A little bit of tit for tat. Actually, we're all very um, interested in doors lately, it seems like. <laughs> I did meet somebody. Um, apparently, they don't have a name, but they were on the other side of a door that seemed to go to nowhere. And they let me know that doors can open anywhere. And I think that's both a great metaphor for you, my little thin blood, and also maybe some advice that can come in handy for us with this Oculus thing. Don't you think? Yeah, probably. And so closes another <laughs> chapter of Midnight Gravity. Ooh, hot dog. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Wow. Thank you all for playing. Quick GoFundMe update. Thank you to Debbie Ann Whelan for the donation and to an anonymous donor who we shall leave anonymous. Thank you both very, very much. Megan, uh, as our special guest, do you care to plug something first? Uh, sure. Um, I'm on Instagram at Hello Megan Martin. I use pretty much that for everything. And also, I would like to plug this podcast social media. They've got like cool Spotify playlists. They've got awesome yeah. videos. You should check them out as well. And I think they're going to drop that too. Thank you, Megan. Uh, Rachel. Hey, guys. Follow my Twitch and my personal socials. They're Majora's Rose and Rachel Cordell. And while you're looking up Rachel Cordell, like Megan so kindly said, you can also look up me on Spotify and maybe find a cool playlist about the songs that I've been talking about, if mm. you feel like, uh, you know, going on a little adventure. Delving into the mind of Mars. Delving into mm. the the mind. Yeah, you could say that. Um, go ahead and uh, look up <laughs> look up tonight's I song. Also on the YouTube channel, which while you're doing that, you can go ahead and like a bunch of shorts. Yeah, and subscribe. And subscribe and all that. Casey. 
I'm going to go ahead and plug our website this time around, rpjesters.com. We have a whole bunch of stuff there, including little bios about us. We have a whole new bonus content section now. That's awesome. You can go and read some extra short stories that Jonas has written about other kindred in the Chronicle. So go check that out. Yeah, there might even be a new story up there right now. You should check it out. It's a lot of cool stuff that's going on there. You can also check out our social medias and talk to us like and comment on our post we would love to hear from you hear some feedback and stuff like that you know where to find me andrew where i don't know your name where can we find you no andrew go we're all over the world baby we're on youtube (laughs) we're on spotify we're on apple Podcasts. we're on tiktok oh my instagram oh i don't i don't even know okay so i know where to find you no are we on foursquare MySpace. Regrettably, we should Pinterest. get a MySpace. We're on OK Go. We're on OK. We're on the band. We're on the band. OK Go. <laughs> Fun fact: I had an English <laughs> teacher who was one of the founding members of OK Go, but left the band before they actually got famous. Uh, oh, what? That sucks. Mm-hmm. Are you for That's real? That's probably why they got famous, <laughs> yeah. though. I guess he didn't want to do the music videos. Yeah. yeah who the real. Uh, what's that guy's name from the Beatles? Pete Best. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Best. Yeah. It's guy. Are you dark and twisted and plagued? by your dark, twisted thoughts all the time? Well, we know a place where you can get those dark, sick, twisted thoughts out by leaving us a review online. Really, if, <laughs> as long as you put five stars, you can write whatever you want. So just give <laughs> us five stars, write those dark, twisted thoughts out, mm. and hope the comment or the, uh, the review doesn't get deleted. I want to kill my stepfather. <laughs> <laughs> exactly five stars wait we got it we got a little review thing too on spotify yes, oh, did. i didn't know they had written reviews yeah they have little question thingies on spotify and this one's from hold for me pulling up the name because the internet is failing me oh it's right there this is all going in we're not mm. gonna cut any of this uh, we're already over time <laughs> Nothing's from Sydney, from Sydney on Spotify. Thank you for uh, <laughs> they they want twenty more episodes now, please. Which we are working very hard on getting those out. So, <laughs> about, Thank you, Sydney, the backlog's about that big right now. So yeah, you got it. <laughs> coming in hot. Yeah, coming in hot. Hey, you. Good morning. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, he almost got me. I was distracted. Wiki, wiki, eggs and. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Rise and shine and give Cain your glory, glory. <laughs> <laughs>